Oh my God, it's so dark. Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia, and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space out in my backyard. Today, we are going to be out in the garden. We're out in the garden, and we are going to be planting potatoes. We are going to be planting all of the starts that I have started and did not get planted yet. I'm gonna show you them real quick. So, all of these need to go somewhere out in the garden. We are also going to move the Swiss chard into the spot that the Swiss chard is supposed to be in. And we are probably going to uh, start pulling some things because we really need to start pulling things out and re-amending the soil. This is gonna be my year where I actually like keep track of things in my little book because I wanna be able to say next year, like I know when I planted this, I know when I planted that, I know what I used to fertilize it, all of that stuff. So also, I'm trying to do a better job at looking into the camera as opposed to over to myself, but I feel like I won't know if I'm in the frame if I don't look at myself, so y'all bear with me. Someone had left a comment, and I think they deleted it. However, it was very useful for me. They said that me looking over like at myself was distracting to them, um, which, you know, someone could take that as not being nice. I took it as constructive criticism. But listen, we got a lot to do and we about to get started. <laughs> okay, so I have my book and um, I have my little pouch on, uh-oh, I'm looking over there. I have my little pouch on because just in case there are things that I need to uh, harvest, like I have some broccoli that I know I wanna harvest a few uh, broccoli, the few side shoots off of, so I'm probably gonna harvest that. I probably have some greens that I need to harvest too. Also, sorry about the sun, but it's a little chilly this morning and I met my son's girlfriend for the first time today, so that took up my morning. So we are out here in the afternoon with all of the bright sun, but I am loving it, so I'm sorry. Sorry if this is too bright for you. Anyway, I have my book. And so this year, I'm going to do 14 bags of potatoes. I think I did seven bags last year, and I want double. We ran out of potatoes kind of early last year. So this year, I want to be able to have potatoes all the way through winter, essentially. So in order to do that, I figured I would double my plantings this year, and then uh, maybe they'll last us through the winter. So I'm gonna show you which potatoes I'm planting. And I got these from Tractor Supply. They were $7.99 for a four pound bag. My local feed and seed store would have probably been cheaper. However, they have taken forever to get potatoes. And I remember last year, I got a nice harvest um, from the spring planting, so I wanted to get them out early enough. So they were $7.99 a bag. I got four different varieties. So the varieties that I'm planting are Kennebec, Red Noland, Adirondack Blue, and Yukon Gold. Absolutely love Yukon Gold uh, potatoes. So. This company sent me, um, it is Wild Farms Valley. They sent me these wood pellets and it is supposed to help your soil hold water. Like that was the biggest thing for me because I always say that I like growing in bags. However, it takes way more water and you have to water more because they dry out more than if you were planting them in the ground or planting in a garden bed. So I am hopeful that these will help. There'll be a link below to these. Not sure if there was a code or not, um, but if it is, I'll put it down there. But I'm hoping that these help. So what I did is I'm only going to put uh, the wood pellets in four bags because I also want to try it in the tomato bags and in the pepper bags. So I want to be able to make this bag stretch. But what I did was I wrote out the tag. I wrote out the tag for each potato so I would know which ones had the wool in it. And then I can try to see if this is actually helping my plants, uh, well, helping the soil in these bags to stay more moist. So we will see, that's one trial this year. All of the bags are gonna get a granulated fertilizer uh, put in it. This is the one that I like the most, but I'm not very picky about the fertilizer that I put in my bag. I'm also going to put bone meal in these bags because these are root vegetables. Root vegetables like bone meal. Bone meal is high in, I get my MP and K messed up, and I shouldn't because it's literally a part of what we learn in school. <laughs> I think it's the potassium part of it. Um, it may be the phosphate. Let's see. 
So bone meal is high in phosphate and root vegetables like phosphate and it also helps your uh, roots of your plants to get established. Now because I'm planning to plant out very uh, dense this year, like I'm going to very much fill my garden beds, I will be using bone meal and blood meal this year. Um, and then I'm also going to do compost. I'm using black cow. Um, some people say black cow doesn't do anything. Some people say, um, you know, it's full of wood at this point. I've had good success with black cow. And because I did not take care of my actual compost this year, we don't really have anything else um, that I'm willing to use. Black cow has worked for me. And so that's what I'm going to use. All right. So this is my bag that I'm going to start with first. And it was covered with leaves. I just removed the leaves and put them in another bag because I am going to put them back over top of um, this bag. And so I'm going to just break this soil up. When I took this out last year, when I took the plant out, I, oh, look at that. This was a potato bag last year. Ha, we're going to leave it. I pulled all the roots out. So I'm just moving the soil around a bit at this point and then I am really like not even gonna be super I, I'm not I don't do a lot of measuring so this is the bone meal I'm just going to take a handful and drop it in the bag I'm gonna do the same with the granulated uh, all-purpose fertilizer I normally do about two handfuls of the fertilizer and then I'm going to drop some wood pellets down into this bag too. And then I'm going to mix the soil back up and then I'm going to grab I'm going to put some compost in the bag. So, it's literally wool. That's what it looks like, wool pellets. It says it's high in nitrogen. Want to say uh 9% nitrogen and 2% uh potash. Potash. <laughs> so, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. I imagine the wood pellets are going to ex wool. I keep saying wood. The wool pellets are going to expand, and that's how we're going to hold water in. So we'll see. But my soil is really nice right now. Like I said, I covered it with leaves over the winter, and I think that was very helpful because I did not empty these bags. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what I didn't do which I have done in previous years I would empty them and then refill them but that was a lot of work so I did not do that this year now we have fertilized the bag and granulated fertilizer is not going to be available immediately it has to break down so uh, that's why I'm kind of doing everything early because we do still have a frost coming but potatoes can live in the ground well they can survive in the ground uh, even when you have a frost the frost will kill the leaves and that's where you see people say they overwinter potatoes like they leave it in the ground because the potato itself most cases will be fine it is the leaves it's the foliage that's not going to be fine it will die if you get a frost there are some big pieces of wood in it we're just going to toss it over into the garden and we're going to mix this into the bag just like we did the fertilizer and remember if you're going to grow in bags and containers you do want to make sure that you put a good amount of you know fertilizer in the bag because that's the only place it's going to be able to get its nutrients is whatever you put into the bag so now we're going to do the Adirondack Blue first, but I'm going to do my best to keep these tags because I really want to know if this is going to work. I love blue potatoes. Like, I like the way they look. I'm not sure if the taste is much different, but I do like the way they look. <laughs> and these, lucky for me, which is another reason why I was like, I'm going to go ahead and buy these. A lot of these were already chitted. So that's a plus. So I'm going to do two potatoes to a bag. I'm literally just going to dig a hole and drop that potato down in it. And I'm going to do one on this side as well. And you can cut your potatoes in half, but I'm not going to do that. But just so you know, all of these are going to make a plant. So you could cut them just to where you see the little eyes. I'm not doing it. I maybe should, but I'm not. So, we're going to drop that down in there. And we have 
potatoes planted already. And again, I'm gonna put the leaves back over it because leaves can also help hold in moisture. And the potatoes won't have a problem coming up through these leaves either. So we got one bag of potatoes planted now. So I'm going to probably put you in a speed up mode because <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get this done so we can move on to my next planting. 